Hopefully you've had a chance to try each of these practice problems already on your own. Um, if not, please pause this and give it a try. I'm gonna walk through the solutions. So in this problem, we're really gonna be calculating concentration in a few different ways. We're gonna look at percent volume by volume, molarity and parts per million. Um, and we're gonna use mass for that one. And so we have a lot of information presented in the initial part of the problem. And so let's pick some of that out. So we have 0 0.15 liters of our methanol. <laughs> And it's added to 1.5 liters of our water, which is the solvent because we have more of it than we have of our methanol. Um, and so we're gonna try to figure out what our solutions are, our concentrations for each of these. And we can see that we have uh, methanol's density with us um, right here. And we also have the density of water, which we're gonna assume it's one gram per milliliter. So slightly above uh, room temperature is probably what we're looking at. All right. So let's start with number A. A is volume by volume percent. So let's remember what that calculation looks like. Um, so percent volume by volume is gonna equal the volume of the solute divided by the volume of the solution times 100%. So uh, my information was given to me in terms of volume. So this becomes a little bit easier. I also notice that I have the same units for both the methanol information and the water information. So even simpler still. So my methanol is the solute, so that's gonna be on the top of my equation. So I'll put my 0 0.15 liters of my methanol on top. And for my solution, it's going to be the combination of the solute and the solvent. So it's gonna be that 0 0.15 liters of my solvent or solute plus my 1.75 liters of my solvent times 100%. So now I can calculate this. Um, when I do, I'm going to get a value that's 7.9, and I'll use percent. Uh, typically, we just throw the percent, and you'll see it without any further units. You might also want to put in 7.9 volume by volume percent to let someone know that you calculated it based on volumes, and that is the ratio that is being represented by that concentration. So pretty straightforward. All right, now let's look at molarity. So molarity is going to be equal to our moles over our volume, and our volume is going to be in liters. Sometimes I just like to write this as the units because I feel like it gives me a little bit more information and guides my problem-solving strategy. So um, I don't know the number of moles I have at all. I do know the volume of my solution, though. Um, I calculated that up there. That volume of my solution is going to be my 0 0.15 liters plus my 1.75 liters, which is going to be equal to 1.9 liters. But I need to get to moles. So I'm going to start with my solute information that I do have. So for my solute, I have a volume of 0.15 liters. Um, the piece of information that I can use here is going to actually be the density. So for thinking about uh, like working backwards here, if I have liters and I'm trying to get to something that has moles, I would think through this as a dimensional analysis problem. I know I want to keep moles, so I would have that on top of my conversion, and I know I want to get rid of liters, so I would have that on the bottom. Now, looking at this, I, I don't have uh, a w any information about concentration really, right? Because that's what I'm solving for. So what do I know that has moles in it? Molar mass. So if I make this grams, so molar mass is something that I have that always has moles in it. It's a conversion factor. So we've got that. So now we have grams. Now looking at the information given to me, I do have something that I know um, that goes in between grams and volume, and that is the density. So I can set up a conversion with grams on the top and milliliters on the bottom coming from that density that was given to me. All right, so now this just leaves milliliters um, I, that I need to get rid of, and I can do a liter to milliliter metric conversion. So now I actually have a plan and it looks like my units will cancel, right? I can check my liters will cancel, my milliliters will cancel, and my grams will cancel, leaving me with units of moles. So I'm gonna put my plan into action. So to do that, here we go. 
All right, so I'm going to rewrite this. I've got my 0.15 liters. Now I'm going to do my liter to milliliter conversion. Every one liter has 1,000 milliliters in it. Next, it's my density, and that was the 0.792 grams per milliliter. So I'm going to do 0 0.792 grams for every one milliliter of that solution of methanol or volume of methanol. And now I'm going to do molar mass. So I need to have my molar mass in grams per mole. I know it'll be one mole and then I need grams. So for this part, I need to go to my periodic table. The chemical formula here is CH4O. And if I add up the mass of a carbon plus the mass of four hydrogens plus the mass of an oxygen, I'm going to get a molar mass that's equal to 32.042 grams per mole. So that one mole divided by 32.042 grams will be my last conversion factor. And I'll plug in this all in. I'm going to get 3.7076 moles of my methanol. And I started with two sig figs. So I'm going to underline the second significant figure to keep track of that. All right, so now I have my volume and I have my moles, and I can plug those both into my molarity calculation. So my molarity will be equal to that 3.7076 moles of my methanol, underlining my significant figure again, divided by that total volume, that 1.9 liters. So when I plug that in, I'm going to get a value of 1.95138 molar. Um, and I'm only going to have two significant figures, right? But that five is going to round up my nine. And so this is going to turn into 2.0 molar for an answer. So one more. Let's go back up to our problem. So we've completed percent volume by volume and molarity. Now we need to go ahead and do parts per million by mass. So let's play around with that. So let's write out our equation for parts per million again. My parts per million will be the mass of my solute divided by the mass of my solution times 10 to the power of the six. All right, so we just figured out some of this information in the previous problems. Let's go find it. I'm gonna get a different color for my highlighter. All right, so we really need that mass of our solution. If we had stopped our conversion here, when we found out moles, we would have our mass, right? Our liters would have canceled. Our milliliters would have canceled and we would have been left with grams. So we can use that information in our next calculation. Um, and so that would be the mass of my solute. And I don't have any information about the mass of my solvent. So let's start there. So my mass of my solute is equal to that 0 0.15 liters times 1,000 milliliters divided by one liter. And I'm just copying this conversion that I set up already, uh, but didn't, fin didn't do this short of a calculation on, and then multiplied by the density. Now, when I plug these values in, I'm going to get a value that's equal to 118.8 grams of my methanol. All right. Now I need to figure out that mass of my solution. Um, and I won't be able to do that for each separate one, but if I can figure out the mass of my um, water, I can add it to the mass of my solute. So let's do that. I know that I have 1.75 I have liters of water. Um, and I'm going to do the same style of problem solving strategy for my solvent that I did for my solute. So I'm going to convert that into milliliters. So my 1000 milliliters divided by one liter. 
and I'll multiply it by its density. And we said we were gonna assume the density is one gram per milliliter. And so plugging this value in, I'm gonna get um, a mass that's 1,750 grams of water. So now I have the mass of my solvent and the mass of my solute, which means I can figure out the mass of my solution. Because our solution is really just both the, the solute and the solvent. So it's the mass of my solute plus the mass of my solvent, which will be equal to that 118.8 grams plus the 1750 grams from my water. And bringing those two values together and summing them is gonna give me um, a total of 1868.8 um, grams. All right. Um, so we now have enough information to calculate our parts per million. I'm going to take a quick second to review my significant figures. And my first one, when I was getting the mass of my solute, I started with two. So I should end with two. Um, I had three for the mass of my solvent. So I've got three that I can have at the end. So that means I'm just going to underline these here. I'm going to be going with zero significant figures for both of um, my two numbers. So I'm going to report this to zero decimal places. Sorry, did I say significant figures? When I'm adding, I'm going to report the least number of decimal places for my significant figures. So since both of these values, if I had rounded them by sig figs, would be this would be 120 and this would be 1750 still, have zero decimal places, I'll report to zero decimal places. And so that means that I'm going to end this one on the eight right here and get rid of everything after the decimal. Okay, but let's do our calculation with all of our digits and then do that significant figure rounding at the very end. So let's set, go back to our equation up here. And let's fill in the pieces that we've calculated. That mass of solute is 118.8 grams. And a mass of our solution is 1868.8 grams, and that's times 10 to the sixth. So plugging that value into my calculator, I'm going to get 63570. Or um, since I'm going to have, I'm doing division, right? So I have two significant figures in my numerator. I'll have four significant figures in my denominator. And so I need to report to two significant figures. So that's really going to be that rounding that three up to a four. So my answer for this one is going to be 6.4 times 10 to the fourth parts per million. I could also write this as 64,000. Or sorry, yeah, 64,000. 